All right, YouTube, I'm going to review a, um, I guess it's a simulator I bought. Uh, it's pretty much a video game, but Real Flight um, Drone Flight Simulator. And um, it, it, it tries to be pretty realistic. Uh, I think it is on uh, certain levels, but not all levels. Um, but technically... Uh, as a as a, a practice aid to help you fly, I think it actually does work pretty well. Um, now to demonstrate, I have um, I have a Phantom Phantom Three. It's just the standard, but um, and I have the controller here, and you can see the joysticks are um, they're sprung to center always. And um, the flight simulator actually comes with a USB, what I imagine is pretty standard uh, setup for any sort of RC aircraft. But uh, it's sprung as well, except for up and down. Uh, I guess this is where the throttle would be on an airplane. So if you see me playing the game and I tend to be drifting up or down, it's because I forget to center that because my drone does it for me by itself. <laughs> Um, but nonetheless, it's pretty accurate. It has switches up and down. It has gimbal control over here, uh, but it's controlled by your right hand and not your left like you would with this finger. So it's, uh, not quite accurate, but it works well enough. So I'm going to try and, uh, play the game here and I'm going to run it in, with several different drones and maybe... Uh, several different uh, um, environments, I think they call them. Um, here we go. And uh, like I said, I have a Phantom drone. It has um, GPS, and it'll want to hold a location. Some of these are like more stunt aircraft, and I can't fly those. I have one. It's in the back there. I. <laughs> it's... It relies entirely on you to control it. I'd rather let the airplane fly itself and me just tell it where to go. But, uh, you know, there's a drone for every uh, purpose, I guess. But we'll, fly, uh, we'll select the flying site first because it takes a while to load. And I think the, the castle uh, is kind of interesting. I don't know. There, there's an air race stadium. There's a Japanese temple. Um, obstacle, you know, there's a couple different environments. It really doesn't matter because if you stray too far, it really just becomes uh, an open field. There's not a lot of detail once you leave the initial takeoff point, uh, which is fine. I mean, you don't need to be flying miles away in a video game. <laughs> there's no reason for that. So um, we'll select our airport. First of all, and it takes a minute to load, and it's also kind of loud and fully throttled, but um, we'll select an aircraft, and there's several different aircraft, as you can see, um, ranging from more basic models, which are really hard to fly, and I... I'm not. I don't know all the makes and models, but I th I think all of these are just made up to avoid copyright. This kind of looks like a cheapo drone I have. Uh, this kind of looks like my Phantom Three. Uh, in looks only, the performance between them. This performs, I think, most like my drone. Uh, within the game, it it's. Not all allow, you can see the gimbal control there. Um, Quadcopter X, as it's called, does not have that, although in real life a Phantom drone would. Um, and actually this, I, was it this Hexacopter? There's one that I flew earlier, and it may be this one. Yeah, that seems to have the most realistic gimbal control, and... As far as I can tell, the pro probably the most similar performance to just a, a Phantom 3. Um, 
So don't get hung up on the fact that this one looks like a Phantom. If you're actually using this to practice maneuvers and stuff, I don't know. This one might be a little better. It might not. It's hard to judge scale in the game, so I, I, it's hard to judge speed, and there's no register. Um, like, your drone would give you feedback about altitude and, and speed, but this doesn't give you anything. It's it's more just to practice maneuvers, and it's fun. Uh, so we'll pick this guy. And there's multiple different views. Um, actually, if I... I don't know if you can hear me now, but you're not missing much having me in the corner, but the binocular vision of the, the drone, which is really just its rep, uh, orientation in relation to me, um, or the, the camera, I guess you could say. Um, so we'll just ignore that and put me in the corner because you want to see me, right? Um, there are several different views. Um, I think the most realistic is to have gimbal view down here and a, a static position on the screen like so. And I hope you can hear me over the noise of the of, of the six rotors or whatever's happening here. But this is almost like what it's like to fly the drone in real life. You, you have your cell phone down here in the corner. On the controller and you have you know the drone flying in front of you like a killer robot and we'll say go that direction and it gets quieter and, and leaves your field of view but down here on the uh, lower left that's almost what it's that's the live feed and that's actually the gimbal you can see you can control that it's really fun uh, and then maybe we'll turn around and see the castle. You know, the big evil building, but as you can see, um, and again, if I forget to stop ascending or descending, it's because the joystick doesn't center like it does in real life. But uh, I think this is the most realistic way to play the game, to have your field of view filled with just what you can see of the drone leaving, you know, see it going off into the sunset there but then again you look down uh, the lower left and you can see what it sees and and you you fly you use both in real in in real life you'll sort of have to rely on seeing it visually and seeing what it sees and again it does it doesn't contain any data like you'd be, you'd be constantly viewing like uh, the, sp the speed of the drone itself, the height of the above the ground, or I guess the altitude, all those kind of things. But if I can hover right there, um, I'll change views so that you see what the drone sees, and then maybe down here we'll see the fixed view. Yeah, there's there's me looking up at the castle. And then we can actually use the gimbal here to land on the tower. The the controls are really good. I like it. You can see. That's very similar to real life. I like that. And like I said, this is some kind of hexacopter that is probably not even a real production model. It's just made for the video game. But this is the one that feels the most real to me. Let's see. It, it doesn't want to descend like I expect it to. But we'll fly under this willow. Between the trees. And this one is actually kind of, kind of slow, but... And the, like I said, the gimbal, whoa, you see, it looks too far. Mine won't uh, center above, it won't look above the horizon ever.
but this is the only one that accurately kind of models the gimbal. Like, see, I'm flying back and forth, and it's relatively smooth. You can see down there in the corner, I'm just going crazy. I'll land this here. We'll maybe pick a different, we'll pick the quadcopter X. Um, change the view here. But you see how the gimbal, it, it should always be facing the same direction. It shouldn't veer wildly up and down like that, left, right. Backward, looks up at the sky. Forward, looks at the ground. That's not how it should be. That's not how it reacts in real life, at least with the Phantom Drone. Uh, so, actually, we won't, we won't even land this one. What we'll do is just crash it. Because you could do that in the game, too. It's fun. Um, and then I'll bring up um, maybe one more. We'll select an aircraft, and we'll go to one of these more stunt-oriented ones. Or maybe you can say a lower end doesn't have GPS. You can... Whoa, see? I started at full throttle. You can't do that. Reset. Centered is uh, no throttle. There's full throttle up and full throttle down. Which you can destroy this thing pretty quickly. Hey, bye. There it goes. Rest in peace. Pieces. So we'll reset. Uh, we'll reset with no throttle. That's what we were trying to do. And we'll change views to nose view. So this one, you're entirely controlling the, the four uh, rotors. Uh, it's very hard to fly. And I have one of these, and I crash it more than anything, and I put it in the box because I'm done with it. Because, you see, disarm. And it would be really fun. You see... Oh, you can do flips and stuff, but then you cr you end up crashing it. So, you know, no fun unless you're actually good at that kind of thing. I'm not. So, it seems the the one that seems to work the best for me is this the one with gimbal control. Yes. You can see that's. That's really nice. Yeah, we could fly over some hay bales. Maybe we'll, uh, what have we got here? I know we have a castle. I guess we have some tents. Oh, there's a scotch pine or something, some kind of Christmas tree. I'm going to fly under this tent. See, and this seems a little slow to me. And gimbal up, and then we'll shoot up into the air. And see, with this one, we can practice our gimbal control, which is... A <laughs> A lot different from every one of the drones that they see this one won't even look all the way to the ground like mine will but it's still it gives you some practice on how to Mountains there, there's the sky, mountain range, this uh, castle that we happen to be filming, I guess. But, like I said, they get as a technical aid, it really helps you practice just kind of flying and playing with the camera, depending on the drone model in the game. But, you know, 
you'll want to play with all of them. And it it is kind of pricey. It's a little over $100 on Amazon, but it does include the controller and the game, which is not really the cutting edge of gaming, <laughs> but it's still fun. And, uh, you know, you can still land your drone in the center of this medieval castle, like maybe not everyone can do in real life, but yeah. Let's see if we can do it here without crashing. I'm sure I can. Ooh, until I play with the gimbal. There you go. Home sweet home uh, in the castle. In... See you next time.